When you hear the phrase soft as steel, what do you think of? While the word steel might conjure up images such as massive high rise buildings, where does the soft part come in? And what exactly does this mean in our work and in our lives? Welcome to the Soft as Steel podcast with your host, Dennis Duran, featuring engaging conversations with a wide range of industry leaders around soft skills, how we practice love, inclusion, social justice, and compassionate leadership that's everlasting in the workplace. And now, here's Dennis Duran. I'm very pleased to have Barton Mallow as my guest today. First, Ryan Maybach, who is the president and CEO of Barton Mallow, headquartered in Southfield, Michigan. A fourth generation builder, Ryan began his 26 year career in his family's business as an intern in the summer of 1996 and was hired full-time as a project engineer in February 1997 upon graduation from Purdue University with a construction engineering degree. He's filled several roles since and was appointed president of Barton Mallow in 2011. Ryan has worked to expand the enterprise through rapid alignment, strategic growth, and innovation with initial vision to establish core purpose and values. More recently, he set a vision for industry transformation as part of this vision, Ryan led Barton Mallow's entity expansion in 2020, transforming it from one company into a family of companies. Today, the Barton Mallow family of companies consists of four entities and five partner firms, all operating on a culture of empowerment, continuous improvement, and harnessing the full potential of each team member. His passion for positively impacting the industry is rivaled only by his unique ability to connect with team members and serve his community. As a devoted member of the Detroit business community and active with the business leaders for Michigan, Ryan serves various organizations. He's been recognized with numerous accolades throughout his 26-year career, Barton Mallow. He was named to Building and Design and Construction's 2009 40 Under 40, appointed to the 2010 Young Engineer of the Year by Engineering Society of Detroit. And he's also appeared on the respective 2012 40 40 list of Crane's Detroit Business and Engineering News Record. All of them excellent, outstanding recognitions and well-deserved as well. We'd perhaps not be having our conversation without the help of my other guest, Ethan Yule. I met Ethan when Steve Shelman reached out to me to deliver a soft skills workshop for Barton Mallow team members in Southfield, Michigan, and Glendale, Kentucky. His explanation of why this workshop is happening, and I'm referring to Ethan's explanation, grabbed my attention. He said simply that part of his responsibilities as a general superintendent is to help develop and retain our talent. We recognize that soft skills are a key attribute to leadership development. And now let me introduce Ethan in his own words. I started with the laborers union right out of high school. My dad and several other family members worked for Barton Mallow at that time and helped me hire in. I spent 11 years working with the tools on projects all over Michigan, the East Coast, and Texas. Four years ago, I was promoted to general superintendent for our concrete division. My responsibilities primarily include safety, execution and development, resource planning, team alignment, and union engagement. I take an active role and represent Bar de Mallow at the American Concrete Institute. A highlight of my 15-year career with Bar de Mallow was in 2018, when I helped orchestrate our mega slab pour in Arlington, Texas, which earned Bar de Mallow a golden trowel and an unofficial world record for the largest indoor continuous steel fiber reinforced concrete slab. I'm so pleased to have Ryan and Ethan as my guests. Gentlemen, welcome to the Softest Steel podcast. Dennis, thanks for having us. Thank you, Dennis. You're very, very welcome. So I don't normally start with a question that wasn't simply inspired by the introduction, although I do have to say, and I'm not trying to be overly gracious, I am inspired by both of you just based on what in Ethan's case he said about himself, and in your case, Ryan, someone probably very ably helped you to say about yourself. But it says something very, very important about Barton Mallow, and it's not the only reason why I'm wearing one of your shirts for this conversation today. I just happen to like the color, the size fit, but it wasn't that your name is all over it, really. So, Ryan, let's start with the, this question, which I fed you last night. What words best describe the essential values that your firm embraces every day? 
Yeah. Hey, Dennis, I do have to say too, this sure looks good on you, but I think <laughs> specifically to your question, our stated values are integrity, partnership, and empowerment. And we go on to further define each one of those, but by and large, they're generally well understood words at face value. You know, interestingly, I think even as a part of the, the introduction, I had opportunity early in, in my current role to be a part of a team that that revisited and, and revised, uh, cre- created those three, you know, went deep into our, our history to uh, try to draw those out more specifically and overtly than, than maybe what we had in the past. And I think that's been about uh, 12 years now. And so we're actually on the cusp of refreshing that, that ideology and, and reevaluating it. So I think to your question, you know, what what you know, essential values, I, I think a word that's been pinging around in my head more frequently for the last uh, couple of years or so, really, I think a lot through just experiences in COVID, uh, is just the, the word dignity and just the concept of, um, you know, of, of human dignity, the need therein and the opportunity as well. And just that, you know, really, if you look it up, I, I always enjoy looking up words and in, in, uh, in Webster's still have an actual dictionary that's kind of fun to, to flip the pages through. It just really gets to, you know, the state or quality of being worthy of honor or respect. And uh, certainly for me, that ties into an element of, uh, of faith. And I think it's, it's a word that uh, I do hope that people in any walk experience with us, that they feel as though that they're respected and uh, whatever that that uh, interaction may be, if that's uh, you know, UPS driver uh, dropping off a package in our office or our job site, so one of our own team members or a subcontractor, you know, whomever it is that that they're that they're treated uh, well. Uh, we're not perfect by no means, and so you know, do we uh, do we miss the mark? Um, certainly, but but that's certainly a, the objective is just to, to treat people with respect. Yeah. I think that's terrific. And uh, I think perhaps all three of those words or four of those words were among the words that were displayed in your headquarters building. I took a few minutes and I, and I literally walked around while I was at Southfield and I did write down and I said, actually, I think I made a flip chart out of it that we used in the, in the training. And I wrote down uh, pretty much every word that I saw. And I saw the word integrity uh, up on the wall. I saw the word people which uh, we'll, I want to talk more about that uh, in a very specific way. I, ta- I saw the word inspire, uh, innovate, reimagine, collaborate. Uh, I saw empowerment. Um, I saw think tech. I didn't see, I didn't see, see partnership, but I'm sure that's not, a, that, that maybe I just didn't get to that part of the building uh, yeah, because the rest of them are all there. And of course, and I, and I uh, in, in researching it to find the source of uh, what seemed like a really, a really great quote, uh, which is the the parachute quote. Um, I, I found I found versions of it. I didn't, I didn't find the exact words, but one of the sources of it that I that I found was Frank Zappa said something very much like that about parachutes and and mines. Um, but I think uh, it really it really I hadn't seen it before. Yeah, so it really it it really struck me uh, because you know it, it it really it speaks to. Uh, what's so important to understand about trying to navigate society today? Uh, you, you mentioned, you know, the, the, the post-pandemic notion. We we all went through an experience that it was we hope will be once in our lifetimes, and that was too many, and it had many many effects on us. And the construction industry, you know, the good news, bad news is the good news is we were considered essential in many many places. Uh, so once we figure out how to add the additional personal protection for the for the virus, uh, we were back to work. And that was done within a matter of, in some cases, hours and certainly no longer than days or weeks uh, because of that, of that condition. Um, but, the, but the idea of, of, of how we view ourselves and view other people uh, is obviously at, at, is at the crux of, of what you're, you're thinking and you're feeling and, and how you expressed uh, your thoughts, and particularly as you zeroed on this notion of treating people. Uh, you know, with dignity and respect, um, it can't be said too much. Uh, and you know, from what little research you did about me, or maybe you had a chance to find a copy and flip through my book, uh, it's it, to me, it's, it's all about people. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I give credit to, to Steve and Ethan uh, you know, to take on and say, you know, I, 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 we need to do something for our folks in, in the soft skills area. And they found me, and I was, you know, I was I was very happy to come out and do that for you guys. But that says that also something about your company and your company's culture. 
uh, in, in a really, in a really uh, operational way, a real practical way. Because, you know, neither Ethan or Steve are your kind of, you know, sitting around BS and kind of guys. They're both right at it. Uh, again, uh, you know, I know, I, I know you know them both. Uh, you probably know Steve longer because he's with the com- company a lot longer. Um, but, uh, but they're, 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 they're in the business uh, and they know that every day uh, they got to do the things that Ethan talked about in his own his own introduction. Um, so he has a crisp, clear understanding about what his role is and how that fits into the overall picture uh, of being, you know, a highly respected organization serving customers. Um, so I mean, so you know, kudos on and again, just the the the, the fundamental uh, nature of taking a deep look at yourself. Uh, and hopefully a complete and honest and thorough look, which I think the results will suggest that it was 12 years ago and, and may begin again as you do a, what you refer to as a refresh. Um, but uh, uh, those, are, those are the right values. Those are the right words. Those are the right soft skills. Uh, because, again, we're in the construction business, but we're really not. You know, I, I always say that we're really in the, in the service business. Uh, our service happens to be building things. Uh, and if we're in the service business, that means that we must be serving someone. And, and Ethan heard me talk about this in the workshop. Uh, we call them customers. They put money on the top line of the company, and we hope some money is left over on the bottom line based on how we perform. So I, I, so I appreciate your answer to that first question. Ethan, so your first question, which I, it, it's, it's, this is really a softball question now, because I hadn't seen your, your introduction until after I sent this question. But I'll, but I'll read it anyway. Uh, and uh, but there's probably more to it. So so maybe there's something else that, that you want to say. So when you first joined Barton Mallow, uh, what was attractive to you about Barton Mallow as a place for you to grow and advance in the construction industry? And and you can't say my family worked there. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, I think that's probably part of it, right? But I think as I you know settled into you know working at Barton Mallow, I would have to say. Um, what attracted me to Bart Mallow and, and the, you know, the future or the growth of, you know, being in the industry was um, the presence of craft, you know, people in leadership positions. Um, you know, one being Chuck Minkowski, who, you know, at the time was the director of operations, but uh, worked in many different trades, you know, prior to becoming the director uh, and, and now is the COO of, of Bart Mallow. Another one who is, you know, a little bit closer to me is John Blanchett. Uh, he was, um, you know, carpenter by trade and, and general superintendent of, of our concrete operations at the time. Um, so that's to name a couple. And I'd say through the years, like that's that's stayed pretty consistent. Um, there's been, you know, other people that have, have worked their way up through through the craft. Um, Matt Lentini was, you know, millwright by trade and, and is now vice president. Um, Joe Blanchett was carpenter by trade and, and is now a vice president. Um, Craig Lowell, uh, another great leader, and, and was you know carpenter by trade and is now a director in project delivery. So um, definitely ample amount of opportunity um, for you know not necessarily people that don't have a uh, college education, um, but have learned the tools of the trade and have um, exhibit um, good leadership qualities. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, credit to, you know, our owners, our, you know, our CEO, Ben, ben Maybach and Ryan Maybach and other um, executives within our company. I think they value and see the importance of, you know, craft perspective and experience within our industry. That's a pretty damn good answer. What I like about it is it's, it's, it's specific. You mentioned specific people, but you, you you surface something which is, you know, absolutely essential, but not spoken about enough, and that is the value and importance of of, of highly skilled people performing work, growing, coming into supervision, developing other people. Say something from your perspective, Ethan, about uh, about how uh, how Barton Mallow. Uh, in an organized fashion, uh, develops the people that they bring into their workforce, teaches them, uh, shows them how to become better, how to grow. What are your thoughts about that? I think, you know, to relate to me personally, I mean, I think it's a, there's always been, I would say, a group of people, because it's not really just one, um, but it, I would say there's been a group of people, a team of people um, focused around leadership um, development. Um, I think, you know, we still have that to this day, but I mean, I 
I remember sitting in a, a like an up and coming you know leadership class ten plus years ago um, with with a various you know with various number of people of you know different years of experience and you know that's continued again. I think part of Dennis bringing you you know in to talk to some of our team members is really just you know ca- continuing or carrying that torch you know on with what you know with with what's expected is we have to if we don't develop our people you know we can't continue to grow as a company mm-hmm. ryan what do you hear and listen to what uh, ethan's had to say what do you hear i think it's great and i just to piggyback on a couple of points that, that ethan made mm-hmm. um you know one just a little bit of context as well on, on ethan some of the names that he mentioned and I think in, in a lot of ways, this is a, a real positive in our industry is that it is an industry that is often multi-generational. And so, you know, Ethan references dad, uh, Alan, uh, John Blanchett, who we also referenced is, uh, I believe, uncle. Uh, and in turn, there is this legacy. And in a lot of ways, that's really positive because uh, you can, it, it, it makes it easier to uh, to, to learn, if you will, through the experiences of, of others. And uh, again, positive in, in, in a lot of ways, it can uh, certainly have some of its drawbacks, especially for potentially individuals that come into the industry that don't have that legacy. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I think the power of human potential transcends however you enter the industry. And so whether you enter the industry through uh, the trades, if you enter the industry from some uh, sort of college experience and building construction or engineering or whatever it may be, um, those are just points of entry. And I think with time, your your experiences and uh, the learning that your experiences afford you are uh, really the, the, the best forms of, of education. And I think it's incumbent upon each of us then to try to figure out how do we make good on that? How do we continue to engage in curiosity and, and learn and grow? And I think Ethan's a terrific example of that. I think it's an organization's responsibility to try to do the best that we can to create those experiential opportunities and then create forums, much like Ethan described, where you can talk about it and process it and, again, learn more uh, collectively. And so, um, you know, I think hey, we're doing some, some really neat things. Uh, I think as an industry as a whole, uh, I think we're doing a lot of really good things and, and moving the needle towards, um, you know, em- embracing uh, just a, 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 a increasingly broad uh, pool of people that can see all the benefits of, of construction. Mm-hmm. Just one really quick aside, just to that to that point when we talk about trades as a point of entry or potentially uh, college backgrounds as a point of entry. One of um, a, a really great project engineer that I worked with uh, ended up getting hired. As she had an advertising background, uh, started as a temporary employee, but fell in love with construction. Uh, as a result of a family move, she's no longer with Bart Mallow, but still working in the industry on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. And uh, she, was, she was fantastic. So, I mean, there's no prerequisite for how you engage in, in the industry. But once you're in, assuming you enjoy it uh, to the degree that the three of us do, you know, there's a lot of great directions that your career can go. And it's fun to watch that evolve for people. Yeah. Yeah. Ethan, yes, go ahead. I would wholeheartedly agree with that. I mean, this, the sky's the limit, really, with opportunity. And, you know, probably not just at Bart Mallow, but, you know, specifically to Bart Mallow. I mean, as long as as long as long you are, are willing to learn and willing to grow and, and put the work in, there's, again, there's an ample amount of, you know, opportunity out there. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I, I that just an observation as I listened to the two of you speak is one of my top soft skills comes to mind, and that's authenticity. You both speak in in very clear, and I mean this in the most positive way, plain language. Uh, you know, there are people out there running construction companies. There are people out there running unions because we're in where you're in the unionized segment of of construction, at least for some of your projects, if not many of them. I'm very familiar with the union uh, unionized construction world, working with one of the building trades unions directly in their training and education area. But what I, you know, one of the things that you can't you can't uh, you can't screen for um, uh, if you don't have an ear towards uh, not simply what a person says, but also how, do, how does that get backed up? How do you know it's real? 
And now I'm kind of moving into the little bit of a discussion around workforce development. So topically, we're kind of kind of moving into that area for a little bit. Um, but it, it's you know it is a challenge, um, and it seems to me that what you've what you've done, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that your messaging uh, to to candidates to potential hires uh, is is very specific around the elements that you've both been discussing fluidly. Uh, and I, you know, I, I'm talking to two, two entirely different people, uh, one with what, 15 years experience, one with uh, 26 years experience. Uh, one is part of the ownership of the company. The other one's got family in the business. And, and as you both know, uh, not only is, our, is the construction industry uh, dominated by, by smaller firms, particularly in the trades, at the trades level, uh, but it's dominated by a lot of family-owned businesses. Uh, that that uh, that as generations come and go, uh, they managed in some cases to to just survive the transition from one generation to another. Uh, but in, in in the case of, of Martin Mallow, uh, what you've gone through as you continue uh, family ownership is to thrive, uh, and and that suggests that that your family values uh, are in in sync with the values of your company, and vice versa. Is that a fair observation? Yeah, I mean, you definitely, you said a lot there, Dennis, and I think we could probably unpack a, a handful of, of those topics. You know, family business is, I think, a, a, you know, an interesting thing in and of itself. And, and I think you know, when you look at family businesses, there are absolutely, you know, some elements of points of consistency, as well as, you know, every family is an entirely unique. Uh, can say not only, you know, my, my Family, my family was uh, not the founders of Barton Mallow, but interestingly joined Carl Barton. My great grandfather joined Carl Barton as a as a carpenter back in 1925, almost immediately after he had he had started uh, Barton, the CEO Barton Company that evolved into to Barton Mallow. But I think when you when you talk about longevity, one of the things that I'm really grateful for that I do believe informs our uh, approach to how we look at people and the culture in the organization is that hey, Carl Barton was a man of faith, wrote quite a bit about that, which is uh, really wonderful to have the ability to go back and look at and read. And we're doing a fair bit of that as we approach our, our 100th anniversary next year. But then in turn, you know, my, my grandfather, is, is he led Barton Mallow, was also uh, a pastor of a church. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think faith has uh, been a part of the, the leadership and the perspective and, and certainly the, the culture that we've looked to, uh, to try to create. I wouldn't say that, you know, it is a Christian organization necessarily, but absolutely even the three value, the three words, the values that I mentioned can absolutely draw parallels back to uh, a measure of, of biblical premise and, mm -hmm. uh, and wisdom. Is that the only way? I'm certainly not going to say that that's, you know, the only way for, for any business, but it's certainly been a, a key part of, uh, our business, and, and I think it definitely informs the, the past as, as well as uh, the future. And I think it also helps when you know you engage in something, and you know you while well, you value that something, you value the business, and you value the work that the business does. Uh, it there's a bigger uh, there's a there's a bigger picture, and and you you can it helps to put things in in context that again just a, a bigger picture than just the work at, at hand. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think another just really key point there is that, you know, if you believe that people are created for a purpose, uh, then it connects back into uh, the point that, that I referenced earlier around dignity. So mm -hmm. everyone is, is created for, for some, some purpose, then mm -hmm. certainly worthy of, of, uh, of, of respect. But again, the neat thing when we do talk about construction, Dennis, to your point is, yes, there is a strong a very strong presence of, of family businesses, but then there's also just family legacy. And as, as we mentioned before, whether uh, we can talk about the, the legacy of, of Yules within Bart Mallow or Blanchett's or Minkowski's, there are several families that have been a part of the organization for, for multiple generations. And that's great. And it's also great then to be the point of entry for uh, new families that maybe don't have generations in the past, uh, but potentially have generations in, in the future. And we, uh, we do talk a fair bit about that as well. So, Yeah, I didn't know specifically, and you talk about it uh, very clearly and uh, very easily, about the connection to, to faith. I think that's so important and uh, doesn't, get, doesn't get talked about comfortably uh, very often. 
Uh, again, there, there, are, there are some things which are difficult to talk about for reasons that don't make any sense, and there are other things that aren't. Um, but this whole notion of, uh, of recognizing, uh, my, my phrase is that uh, uh, there, you know, there, there's a plan for me, uh, and uh, my plan is made by, by a power higher than me. And that's the way, and that's the way I say it. And and, and, the, and the notion which I, I live in is I got today, today's yesterday's done, and and tomorrow is just what I think I'm going to be doing. But who knows? Mm -hmm. That serves me very well. Uh, it uh, because for all of us, uh, and, and Ethan's right on the front line dealing with with craft workers and and shop stewards and all kinds of other people on on that construction side at Glendale. You know, all you've got is is what's happening right now, and and an opportunity with whoever you're interacting. Uh, to produce uh, a positive result, uh, to get a decision made, to get an agreement, uh, to get a problem solved, uh, to figure out the next step, or just to figure out why something happened that shouldn't have happened. All the myriad kinds of things that happen every day, um, you've, got to, you've got to operationalize you know, something as fundamental as treating people with respect. It's got to be operationalized and, and in, a, in a manner that, that, that the way it feels to people, particularly for, for you, Ryan, and for, and for you as well, Ethan, uh, you know, a, a general superintendent, if you're, a, you're in a more visible leadership role in the operation. You're not just a manager. Uh, and I'm sure Ryan would, would, would say that, pretty much say it the same way. Leadership is something which is part of what you need to be every day. And you need to do it in a way that demonstrates the values of the company that you align with. And so that people can easily see, this is the kind of company I work for. You don't hire a company. You don't build relationships other than through a contract with a company. You build relationships with people, both inside and outside the company. What are your thoughts around that, Ethan? What are your thoughts? Bart Mello, as one of our core values is people, you know, as well, or I think that Bart Mallow continuously strives to build relationships, not only with clients, but with our you know employees. But I think they stress the importance of it's trying not to look at it as a client base is we want to build the relationship and get to know those people and, you know, show our true value by, you know, not just, a, you know, winning a project off of cost is, but, you know, showing them who our people are. And once they get to know those people, they understand that we are really truly looking out for their best interest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, specifically, you know, on the project down here, we've got some client remarks, you know, that they're truly impressed with how, you know, the magnitude of the job and how many people are here, but they've never once, you know, seen, or I don't want to say never once, you know, we're not perfect. We try to be, but just how people present themselves, right? The, the relationships they have, the conversations that they're in, engaged in. Brian, what are your thoughts? As we talk about relationships, I would also just say we can certainly validate the importance of them, but it's also what makes it fun. I mean, it's really the opportunity to engage with such a diverse set of people. I think one of the really cool things about construction and one of the things that I really enjoyed when I was more project-based is, you know, you think about, to Ethan's point, the range of people that he has the opportunity to interact with on a regular basis, on a near daily basis. I mean, we have had I forget how many cabinet members visit that project. And certainly in the state of Kentucky, many individuals in political leadership. Then there are all of the individuals engaging from regulatory standpoint to then the leadership of Ford to the management of Ford. And then so you can pivot from engaging and interacting with the cabinet secretary to trying to figure out how to deal with the problem of the day with you know a set of iron workers or whatever it may be. So, mm -hmm. you know, the importance of again the soft skills, the importance of the ability to engage in across that broad spectrum is so incredibly high in this industry, but it's also what really makes it enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It's not as though you're dealing with just this, you know, consistent demographic on a regular basis. You're always engaging with new folks. And what's fun is that the range of interest, the range of capabilities, the back to, again, the absolute uniqueness of every individual that you're going to be interacting with. So yeah. for me, that's what made the industry fun, makes it fun today. Relationships are not only good business, but it's just incredibly enriching and fun as well. Yeah. 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 I guess you meet so many different types of people and personalities, right? I mean, with a couple thousand employees down here, not just for Bart Mello, but there's so many different personalities out there. And to Ryan's point, it does make it fun for sure. 
And also to your credit, the reason that the workshop that I suggested to you, you guys said, yeah, let's do that workshop. And that workshop was all about understanding you. And yeah. my premise is that in the world of soft skills and building relationships, and unless you really have an honest understanding about you in terms of your personality, communication style, et cetera, it's very difficult to try to gain an understanding about other people if you don't understand yourself first. So that was kind of like a foundational kind of a workshop to raise everybody's awareness of who they are from the standpoint of their behaviors, not their technical background, not their education, not their certifications, but them as people. And so again, I give kudos to Ethan and Steve for saying, yeah, let's do that. I think that would help us. Thanks for joining us today for this episode of the Softest Steel podcast with your host, Dennis Duran. Dennis is the author of Softest Steel and a leading speaker and trainer for organizations across many industries and verticals. To learn more about the work Dennis is doing to activate soft skills in the workplace, contact him at DennisDuranSpeaking.com. Be sure to check out his book, Soft as Steel, on Amazon or wherever books are sold. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or wherever you'd like to get your podcasts. And please remember to share this episode with your friends, colleagues, and anyone you feel would benefit from the conversation. We'll see you next time on the Softest Steel Podcast with Dennis Duran. Produced by Audavita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.